camera there, Arian Spaceman, the program director, with Dr. Alex of uh, ISRO, program director basically uh, on the day-to-day -day basis, meeting with his customers, reviewing the status of their satellites. If you're not familiar with the launcher, a thumbnail sketch, she stands about uh, 50, 50 meters tall. She is in uh, two halves, they call them composites here, there's a lower and an upper. The lower composite consisting of the main stage and uh, the two boosters on either side, you can see that they both stand 30 to 31 uh, meters tall. And then the upper stage, the upper composite, consisting of the upper stage and the vehicle equipment bay where the computer computers are, the uh, launcher's brains and the navigation systems and the guidance systems. And at the very top, the fairing, which you can see there with the logos. And inside the fairing are the two satellites. Two minutes until launch now. We're going to zoom in on the uh, upper stage. You see the yellow bars going across the center there. We're going to get a close-up of those in just a minute. These are the cryogenic feeder arms, the propellant feeder arms going into the upper stage. There's a split-screen image of it. Liquid hydrogen on the left, liquid oxygen on the right. That's the cryogenic fuel, the mix of those. Why do we do this? The upper stage needs to be refilled up until the very last minute because the cold propellant which we're using, and by cold I mean liquid oxygen minus 160 degrees, liquid hydrogen minus 240 degrees, that's cold, that uh, in this heat, you can imagine, needs to constant topping up. Those of you here tonight in French Guiana, or if you have been here, you know how hot it can be here, constantly evaporates in this heat, so we top up right until five seconds before liftoff. You can see on the back of the screen the invited guests are uh, going to go out on the... On either side here and watch the liftoff. The DDO again will call out the one minute mark and we'll be into the H0 moins une minute. And we're into the final 60 seconds uh, before liftoff. Arian getting ready. Now here's what to watch for with the ignition sequence. You'll hear the DDO call out the D snuff V ten nine eight. And when he gets to five, which is sank, watch those yellow bars at the center there. They have to pull back. Those cryogenic arms will swing back, and that gets the whole thing started. At zero, the DDO will call out allumage, in French means ignition, and the main engine will light, but we don't lift off yet. Count to seven. For seven full seconds, the computers are checking out the performance in the main engine while it's still burning on the pad. If all is well then, and only then, the computers give the order to light the two boosters, which is the point of no return. And we will be off. So watch for all that. Enjoy the liftoff. We'll be back Attention shortly after. Attention to the video for the final count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain, décollage. Well, much, much vi better visibility than we dared hope for just uh, maybe even an hour ago. It's been uh, raining and overcast most of the day, but some fine, fine shots at liftoff of Arian roaring off the pad into the gray, trailing the gold plumes as she makes her way up into the sky over French Guiana. She took off right on time at 17.38 local time. These fine shots are always, always very impressive. 775 tons at liftoff as Ariane leaves the ground. Most of that is fuel, as you will see. She'll beginning, she'll be start to shed that. The DDO is saying that everything is fine on board. Right now, she's burning five tons of fuel per second, 2.5 tons in each booster burning. Uh, that represents the major part of the boost. That's uh, 90% of the acceleration on the power at liftoff. The core stage burning another 300 kilos kilos per second. Roughly add up that uh, altogether, it's roughly the equivalent to a dozen Airbuses. 
Arianne, following now the program in the onboard computer, which has been uh, installed, giving all the orders, including stage separations, which we'll begin to see just very shortly. We're in the first of four flight phases. The first three are powered. The last is not. We'll describe each in turn. So you can follow Arianne as she heads across the Atlantic, where she'll separate the two passengers over Africa. Right now, the first pay phase, the single core stage engine, the co it's called Vulcan, and the two boosters, and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will burn uh, for just over two minutes uh, each, and in a few seconds, you should hear the DDO call out their separation, des deux their separation, and that comes right on time, at about 68 kilometers up. This is what it looks like. There's another uh, booster out of the camera range, but the two of them separated, delivering. Uh, delivering, done, done their job. They fall uh, 500 kilometers away from shore in a protected area. French Guiana chosen partially for its Les large opening on the, on the water. Uh, low risk for the nearby population. We're in the second flight phase now, the boosters having done their job. The, f the uh, core engine burning alone. It'll burn for about uh, nine minutes. The fairing separation is coming up next. And the DDO will be calling out that one. And there it is, at 107, roughly, kilometers. The fairing is in two halves. The other half is out of camera range on the other side. Blown away is the term, because they're separated by two pyrotechnic cords. One is horizontal and one is vertical. The fairing is dropped now because it's done its job. What it does is protect the passengers from the vibrations and friction in the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, above 100 kilometers, we don't uh, need it anymore, so we can get rid of the dead weight. It's a ton or two. On the bottom left of your screen, the bottom two lines, you see kilometers. That's our altitude, 132. And the speed below that, kilometers That's per second. Normal. We're approaching two and a half kilometers per second. The speed we need to inject satellites, roughly nine kilometers per second. So keep your eyes on that. Back with more of the mission. Don't go away. But for right now, the latest news from Ariane Space. On April 22nd, Ariane successfully lifted two new satellites into orbit. Yasat Y1A for the United Arab Emirates and Intelsat New Dawn for Africa. It was a record for a total mass at liftoff for the European launcher, 10 tons. The new Vega launcher underwent combined tests, both electrical and mechanical, at the space base last month. A full-size mock-up of the vehicle, without the fluids, was erected on its new launch pad. Tests of the fluids of the fourth stage are set for June. On April 27th, Ariane Space signed to launch ABS-2 for Asia Broadcast Satellite. Weighing over six tons, ABS-2 will be lifted in 2013. At the European Union Japan Business Roundtable in Rome last month, Jean-Yves Le Gall spoke to 50 decision makers on the importance of reducing barriers to European and Japanese exchange. The beginning of May saw the dry run activities for Soyuz. The launcher rolled out to its new pad and two different countdowns were simulated. These activities tested and validated all the procedures necessary for its upcoming maiden launch from French Guiana. The Russian and European launch teams are now ready for the first Soyuz launch campaign, which will carry the first two satellites of the Galileo constellation for the European Space Agency. In a symbolic gesture on May 7th, Jean-Jacques Dordain, ESA's Director General, handed the keys to the Soyuz launch facilities to Jean-Yves Le Gall. Present were CNES President Yannick Descartes and Vladimir Popovkin, Directors of Roscosmos. Jean-Yves Le Gall and Antonio Fabrizzi, ESA's Director of Launchers, recently signed two contracts for the maintenance of Ariane 5, strengthening ties between ESA and Ariane Space and reaffirming member states' contributions. Very, very busy period here at the space base, as you saw, which began a month ago in mid-April with the Vega testing and then the Flight uh, 201 launch, and then on April, on April 22nd, then the Soyuz dry run, and then capping that very busy period by tonight's uh, launch, all happening at the CSG here, the world's only dedicated commercial space base, and Ariane Space running the launcher family. With Soyuz coming up now, here's a word from the new head of Roscosmos. Five years in the making, the new launch site for Soyuz is now a reality. Here, the first Soyuz vehicle will lift off from French Guiana in the final quarter of this year. Bringing the famous Russian launcher to Europe's spaceport is a logical continuation of a collaboration that goes back a long way. 
So, um, more generally speaking, we can say that this is a fine example of cooperation between Russia and France. Many European countries have been involved in this project as well, and this is quite a significant project. More Russian personnel have been arriving over the past few weeks. These launch teams have come from Baikonur to carry out the necessary final qualifications of the facilities. At the end of the project, I think that relations between Russia, Cosmos, CNES, the European Space Agencies will have kicked into high gear, but we are in the launch process and not there yet. Therefore, we must prove that we're able to build a launch pad for Soyuz in French Guyana, but also that we're also able to do business in a field as complex as that of space technology. The historic Soyuz has 1,770 launches to its credit spanning over 50 years, but it has an even brighter future here in French Guiana as a key member of the Ariane family. Today is a very important day for Ion Space because we are going to start the exploitation of the Soyuz in French Guiana launch system. And this will give us a very competitive advantage because we will have the capability to launch all the satellites of all our customers. Today Ion 5 is a king of this market, but Ion 5 is devoted to the launch of big satellites and with Soyuz we will be able to launch all the medium-sized satellites on every orbit and this will give us a very competitive advantage allowing us to stay the leader in this market for many years. During that film, we were picked up by our first downrange tracking station over the border in Brazil at a place called Natal. Oliverian's trajectory, of course, has been designed to be followed from the ground. The launcher is sending back radar and telemetry uh, to a network of stations. There are five of them downrange, which, of course, keep constant watch on the health of Ariane's vital systems. The antennas pick up the signal and follow her progress. The DDO has called it extinction of the upper stage. Now, this is the end, marking the end of the first half. You see what happens there? The first stage extinguished and separated from the mothership, and then the upper stage engine is ignited. These three orders happening right on time at about 186 kilometers up, as you can read on the lower left, and uh, these, these uh, three orders are given by the onboard computer all in a period of about uh, 12 or 13 seconds. We're in the third flight phase. Upper stage will burn for